morning from sunny Colorado. Look at that awesome view in the background, that's Pikes Peak. And uh, I just wanted to deal with the question of why is God allowing the coronavirus? Um, just from what I have seen and read and what I believe. And my short answer to this question is that he isn't. And I uh, hope I've got your attention now. Um, but I'm going to explain why I think that is the case, why that's true. Um, but first, I just want to deal with the, the question of um, God's judgment. And you know, I've seen uh, various places uh, where Christian uh, preachers and leaders have been uh, saying that uh, the coronavirus is part of God's judgment against m mankind, against the world. And I find that quite distressing because I just don't think that's true. Um, I don't think that is um, a good understanding of um, the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, how God has revealed himself uh, through the Bible. And uh, I'll just go on to explain what I mean in that respect, is that um, God is the ultimate giver. Um, he is good. All um, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness comes from God. And uh, you know, in James 1 verse 17, it, the Bible tells us that every good thing we have comes from God. So his nature, and we need to understand God's true nature, his n true nature is as the ultimate giver. And uh, uh, that's why Jesus told us to call God uh, Father, um, because he's the ultimate Father um, who cares for us. And um, he's also um, the Father with the kind of generosity and the giving nature of a grandfather. Um, if that kind of um, resonates with you, um, it's often grandparents, isn't it, who who kind of are outrageously generous. Um, I had a grandfather like that, uh, Desmond, and um, just to give you an illustration of what I mean by this, and this is not to say my father um, was not generous or is not generous, just in case he ever watches this, um, but my grandfather Desmond um, was just, knew nothing was too much for him and he always kind of carried a, a wadge of cash around with him ready to kind of treat and um, give away to those who were the objects of his, uh, his affection and he had um, quite a few grandchildren and uh, uh, he only passed away a couple of years ago and a year or two before he passed away my wife Sarah uh, met him in our local town, um, Uckfield High Street, for those of you who know where that is. And uh, she just bumped into him one afternoon and got just chatting to him, you know, seeing how he was and all the rest of it. And as part of their conversation, my granddad says, oh, I've, I've just been to the bank. And at which point he grabs this wadge of cash out of his pocket and says, is there anything you need? Is there anything you need at all? Um, and Sarah, Sarah was kind of a bit surprised by this as he kind of proffered this wadge of cash and she said, oh no, no, we're fine, thank you. Um, you know, if it'd been me, I'd have probably just grabbed it. Um, but yeah, that just illustrates his kind of, his generous nature. Nothing was too much for him. And that's what God is like. And um, in Jesus, we see the full, um, depiction, the full kind of um, revelation of God. Um, in Hebrews 1 and Colossians 1 it tells us that um, Jesus is, is the fullness, the full um, image of God. And um, so if you want to know what God is like, then look at Jesus, look at the person of Jesus. Now I also know that um, in the Old Testament um, God's um, judgment is revealed and we see God as revealed as a judge, judging and, and bringing judgment on mankind and on the earth. And um, so we need to address this as well, don't we? And um, even those, what, what struck, strikes me about the Old Testament is that even those who lived through the Old Testament and saw God's judgment, actually witnessed it or experienced it themselves, um, there's this, this phrase this, um, repeatedly through, used through the, the Old Testament that, that says, God is slow to anger, he's abounding in love, and mercy and compassion. And the likes of Moses, David, Joel, Jeremiah, all through the Old Testament, those, and they actually, those guys witnessed God's judgment on the sin of mankind, on the rebellion, on the, on the evil of mankind. Um, that's what God was judging. Um, and they witnessed it, but still said, God is good. God is love. God is mercy. And so we need to 
we need to bear that in mind. And um, you know, it's true. God is holy and just. He hates sin. Um, hates evil. Um, he can't stand it. Um, but in Jesus, he has judged our sin. And, and our wickedness. Um, Jesus has taken that judgment in our place um, through his death on the cross and then he's declared his victory um, and his life and his righteousness for us through his resurrection. And um, when Jesus um, came, he said, and it's recorded in John's Gospel, uh, in John chapter 3, he said, I've not come to condemn the world, but to save it. And then again, in John 5, he says, <clears throat> the Father has committed all judgment to me, to Jesus. And then in, in John chapter 12, Jesus goes on to say, I do not come to judge the world, but to save it. So Jesus has come as the saviour, not, not as the judge. And so he has taken our judgment when he came. And um, that's not to say that judgment isn't coming. Um, we know from, from the Bible and what Jesus said that he's coming back. And when he comes back, then he's coming back as the judge. And that's when God's judgment is going to be um, revealed against, um, against mankind, against the evil in this, on this world. Um, but it's not now. Um, and, and the Bible's clear about that, that we are living in this new covenant. We had the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and that was when we saw God's judgment revealed um, in the Old Covenant against sin and, and evil. Uh, and that's written about by those guys I mentioned earlier, Moses and David, um, etc. But we're living in the New Covenant, uh, the New Testament, and um, we're living in the grace um, of, of what Jesus has done for us. Um, so that kind of brings me on to the question of, so, okay, God is not judging the world through this virus um, his judgment is to come um, so but surely as a uh, sovereign God who made everything sustains everything and the Bible is clear about that um, he is allowing this virus um, but what we how we need, we need to understand um, that he's not allowing this virus in terms of giving it his direct permission or approval um, at all and what he's um, how we need to understand that is by going back to Genesis, right to the beginning, when God created the world, he created man, and Genesis tells us he created um, the world for mankind, and that he gave us dominion and authority over it. And this is um, reiterated and, and supported in, in other scriptures like Psalm um, 8 and also Psalm 115, where it says that um, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the sons of man. And so he gave um, the earth, he gave dominion of this earth to us as, as men, as, as mankind. And what did we do with it? Well, we, we kind of messed it up, didn't we? I mean, if we bring this idea of, is God in control and does he, um, is he allowing everything that's going on? Well, bring it back to yourself. And does, does God control you? Um, well, no, he doesn't, does he? Because you have free will. And what about the other eight billion odd people on this world? Does he control them? No. And so, and you're probably listening to this. You're probably better than than the average person. I'm 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 counting on that. Um, and so, if God isn't controlling you, and he's not controlling the other eight billion people on this earth, then look at how much of the, the stuff that's going on around this world that is is not good has created that has been has come through men has come through mankind and um isn't isn't what god's will isn't what god has done but he, he's given the earth to us and we've then messed it up massively and there is even you know a case to be made that this coronavirus has been um created has been you know created by men by mankind um i can hope i'm making this clear um but also it's it's kind of stronger than that and that um, not only have we kind of messed up in terms of what God has given us, but we've actually given away our kind of authority on this earth um, to the devil, to Satan, who is the father of all lies, who's the, Jesus calls him the thief, who comes to kill and steal and destroy, and that, that's what he's done. And we've given that authority away to him. Um, and um, that's why um, Jesus calls, says in John uh, chapter 12 that he is the, the, the prince of this world. And Paul the Apostle says something similar as well in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, that he is the God of this world, because we've given that authority away um, to the devil, he's taken it from us. And that's why in Luke chapter 4, when Satan comes to tempt Jesus, uh, he, he says to Jesus, oh, look, bow down to me and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world, because they, have, they are mine to give away. And Jesus doesn't 
argue with them in that, on that point. It doesn't say, no, they're not yours, they're mine, or no, they're not yours, they're um, the, human, the ra human race. No, he, he, he doesn't um, take issue with Satan on that point. And, you know, Satan says they're mine to give away. Um, and so that's why um, we've kind of got ourselves um, into, this, into this mess. And then, and then we try and blame it on God. And that's, um, that's when you know, we, we start to misunderstand who God is and people start blaming God and saying, I can't believe in this God who, who will allow all these things to happen. Well, he isn't. Um, and um, you know, we just need to um, get a hold of this and um, look to God's goodness and his kindness. Um, and it, you know, in Romans chapter two, it says, it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance, to changing our hearts, to turning away from evil and turning to good. And that's why Jesus came, to give us that um, chance, give us that opportunity. And so yeah, just in conclusion, um, uh, I hope this has made sense. Um, and you know, the conclusion is that um, God is um, holy and just and he is sovereign and this, none of this takes away from the fact that God is sovereign that he does he has created the universe that he sustains the universe and that um, he is the highest in authority and glory and honor and rank no no one's above him nothing's above him but to then say that he then you know controls everything and allows all this stuff going on around us this evil um, is just taking it a, a, you know is perverting that that truth of God's sovereignty and he is holy and just and that um, and you know as I said earlier um, Jesus is coming back um, he's coming back as the judge um, but now he is extending his his hand his arms of grace um, to us uh, and it's it's, a, it's up to us do we receive that um, or are we gonna are we gonna s stay in the in the kind of lies and the deceit and the evil of the world and of, of, of the devil um, or are we gonna um, run to Jesus so that's what I encourage you to do. And um, yeah, just have a great day and God's blessing on you and um, speak to you soon.